the next part of the trip is Italy back to England, of course. And uh, on the way back, it's going via the hotel in Alto Adige, Hotel Peter, where we were staying in Alto Adige near Bolzano. So that's where we had to get to. And then from there onwards, we would go up into Austria, Germany, Belgium, and then a little bit of France at the end. Right, the uh, the car is packed and we're ready to go. We've um, put far too much in here. Um, as always, the roof box is completely stuffed, full of old stuff like our old Wii console and a PlayStation 2 that was a Guitar Hero, all this sort of stuff that was left in Rome. We've got 74% battery and at the moment it says 291 kilometers on the GOM. Um, that's based on 16.2 kilom- um, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which I still can't get my head around. Ah, let's see how far we go. First stop was the Valdikina outlet village. Well, in fact, that should have been the first stop to charge. Actually, we decided to kind of do a little short stop and top up the charge uh, before then. Uh, we added um, we added 25% of charge at the NL charger, which cost £9.77. Again, it's so ridiculous that you can uh, it could have charged 100% at Ionity uh, for £8. But anyway, we ended up arriving at Ionity with 39% battery. So we actually could have made it, albeit with only 14% battery left, you know, without charging halfway as well. Um, and we really should have just gone for it because the good thing about Ionity is that there's several stalls. I mean, at this um, place there were four. So the chances are you'd be able to charge. So we're now at um, Val di Chiana, uh, Ionity charges. And um, there were two Teslas here. Actually, one's just left, but two Teslas here charging already. Uh, so there were two free. So, and that's the good thing about Ionity is that um, you are pretty much, well, I think always guaranteed to find at least one available. And, uh, and they seem fairly reliable, at least, well, not in England, but here they seem reliable. Anyway, so um, be here for a while and then, um, and then we'll be off to the hotel, which is another hour and a half, but we'll charge here up to 100%, get some pizza, have some snacks, walk the dog a bit, and, uh, and then we'll go. Um, but uh, yeah, so far, so good. So we're at 100%, uh, so it's off to Villa Campestri, Villa Campestri, I can't roll my R's, Villa Campestri, Villa Campestri, um, which is north of Florence, so off we go now. The hotel we were going to was 195 miles away, so actually if we didn't have the roof box I reckon we could have, we could have done it probably without even having to charge, and this also had a destination charger. But whether or not they have a working charger, that's the problem. Or whether other people are using the destination charger, you know, I don't know. So I don't want to take too many chances like it happened in France. I mean, in France, that BMW didn't move, so I had to go to a rapid. So we made it there and wow, it was beautiful. We've arrived at Villa Campestri and good Lord, it's stunning here. It's ridiculously beautiful. I'm gonna jump in the pool, but um, I'm just about to plug in to the charger. They've actually got a Tesla parts. So they've got two They've got two chargers, one for Tesla, one for normal. I'm gonna try the Tesla one because I can't actually get to the normal one because uh, the parking just doesn't allow it. How do we do? We got here with 63%. We took a hell of a detour actually, and when it was very windy, but 63% and it says 229 kilometers on the GOM. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, let's plug in and uh, get to the swimming pool. Yeah, so when it says Tesla, it means it doesn't work on other cars then. So I'm gonna have to ask them to try and get them to move this. I also didn't know that pressing that button opens the charge port on the nearest Tesla. Anyway, I didn't didn't know that. But no, there's no way I can get to the other one. I'm gonna have to ask them to move one of these cars or something so I can get in. I love destination chargers. They're so good. It makes so much sense. Uh, you just put, you know, park and uh, you've got 100% battery in the morning. So it's, it's so good. Right, okay. So we're going to a hotel in the mountains uh, now in the Alps um, near Bolsano. 
and um, it's 380 kilometers, I believe. The GOM is saying 393, so in theory, it, that would suggest we could actually make it without having to charge. But um, the website, a better route planner, which we've relied on the whole time, says we're going to have to um, charge. Well, it says we need to charge twice, really, because once we get to the hotel, there's no charger there. So we want to we want to have a good amount of charge when we're there to then travel around the mountains a bit. So um, so we'll have to charge twice. Uh, but that's fine. One, uh, the first one anyway. We'll um, uh, we'll want to break up the journey a bit and have some lunch. So um, yeah, okay. We'll get we'll get on our way then. So we left Villa Campestri and we headed for an NL charger at Mantova Outlet Village. So it's another one of these big shopping centre kind of places. Instead of Ionity, they just had the one NL charger. Um, but it was it was all good there. The hotel that we were going to, Hotel Peter, um, we could have made it without charging halfway. But because the hotel didn't have a charger, we thought it best to top up halfway again. So we did. The problem is we wanted to stop on the motorway, the motorway services, but we got in there and it was weird. We could see the sign for the charger, but it was blocked off. They were doing construction or something like that. So they blocked off the, the bit. We tried to get round, but it was a one-way system, and the only way of getting back round to it would have been either annoying a lot of trucks and probably getting smashed by a truck because they weren't stopping for anyone. So getting round a kind of a stupid one-way system on this service, stay on the services, or going back on the motorway all the way up to the top, back round and back down again. And we just thought, well, fine, we'll just go to Bolsano and we'll go, we'll charge there instead. So we went to Bolsano, went to an Alperia charger. It was a real bugger to find this one as well. And we ended up driving on a bus lane, in fact, to get to it in the end. But anyway, the charger didn't work. And I have no video of this because I'm busy kind of on the phone. I'm videoing with the phone. I'm busy on the phone, calling them up. They didn't speak English, so I'm talking. Yeah, I had to speak either Italian or German. Well, my German is not good. Well, it's non-existent in fact so um, I had to speak some Italian and um, try to explain that the charger wasn't working now they didn't reset it like the one like in France they just reset the charger they were really helpful and got it working again they just said oh well uh, find another one and offered to tell me where the other one was but I could see from the new motion app so that was that was the only on the whole trip that was the only charger that failed um, which is not bad going really just luckily it was in Bolsano where there was a choice of other chargers so we went to the other charger and weirdly it's on um, or kind of yeah it's on an Audi or in an Audi uh, showroom or in, the, in their car park anyway and it's got e-tron written on the on the two parking spaces for the charger so uh, I guess they leave the e-tron parked there most of the time luckily an e-tron wasn't parked there then so we were able to charge um, we, then we just uh, sat there for what felt again it just felt like ages so we were there for 55 minutes off we went up to the mount, up the mountain to hotel peter which is in monte san pietro or petersburg you might not know this but in uh, alto adige they speak both italian and german so it's part of italy but they see themselves as german really um and uh so everywhere there has two two names um, Bolsano is Bozen, for instance, and uh, anyway, I won't bore you with it. Ecco il Bosco dei Lupi. Il Bosco dei Lupi. E orsi anche. Bosco dei Orsi che mangiano papà. Oh no. We've arrived in beautiful Alto Adige and we've got 71% battery left, 22.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, but you know, we're going up the hill. When we go back down, it'll uh, be fine. So we're here, and uh, as always, it's time to jump in the pool. There's no charging point at the hotel that we're at, but in the underground garage, we found that. So I'm gonna try and plug in there. We have asked them and they said it's fine. Obviously it's very slow, 2.1 kilowatts. So yeah, 11 hours to get to 100%, but you know, it's better than nothing and uh, it's free. And that's the magic of having an electric car. Just taking the dog for a walk before we go on the 
big journey back home. Uh, first, we're going to stop at a place called Olm in Germany. And uh, there's a hotel there that has a charge place, so that's good. And then after that, I think we have one kind of normal charger. And then I think we're going to have about five Ionity chargers uh, all the way home. So that's great because Ionity are um, cheap. There's plentiful because there's uh, lots of stalls. And um, let's hope they're reliable. Okay, the dog's doing a poo now, so I won't film that. We stayed at this hotel for four days, eating fantastic food, drinking delicious wine and seeing wonderful sights. And after that, we started the journey home, or we continued the journey home. And the first stop was a hotel in Ulm in Germany, um, but we needed to stop for a charge in Austria first. Uh, the charger was in Petnau. Uh, so we got to the charger and I don't know why, but I really loved it. Um, uh, well, is it weird to love a charger? It is weird to love a charger. The battery's doing a bit better than expected, so, um, but we were dying for a pee and uh, to eat, so we've stopped at just, I think it was just over 50%. Um, anyway, we stopped at one of these chargers. It seems very reliable and really quick as well to start. Uh, the process looks pretty good. So um, anyway, we just stopped here for a bit and then we'll be on our way again. From then on, we went to Hotel Meinl in, uh, in Ulm. Well, this had a destination charger, so I was a very happy bunny. We've gotten to Germany. It's so nice after you get out of Austria, uh, well, Italy, and then into Austria. We, a beautiful, I mean, stunning place, Austria, good Lord, and Italy. Uh, but it's so nice getting onto the uh, autobahn once you get to Germany, because there's all these windy mountain roads, and my wife and daughter, they get car sick anyway, so. And it's also a really long drive. But anyway, so in Germany now, and it's quite refreshing, and ah, uh, um, also refreshing in that it's uh, much colder than it was in Italy, but that's to be expected. So anyway, so we're at a hotel, Meinl. Meinl, I'm not sure if I've said that right, but, um, and they have charging points actually at the front, but the receptionist said they don't work. So they've got a Tesla charger here for all electric vehicles. So I'm gonna try that now. We got here with 41% battery um, uh, which doesn't seem too bad to me because I was really um, I was really hammering it on the motorway because um, we were so late um, so yeah you know it did it did pretty well um, I found out that the roof box you shouldn't go above 80 miles an hour which is about 130 kilometers I think um, but uh, I still did and uh, it didn't fly off so that's a relief anyway right I'll plug in now Well, I've plugged in, but nothing's happening. Hmm. So it turns out they turn on the chargers at about 9.30, so that's why it wasn't working. Um, and uh, now it's on, and it's getting about 4.3 kilowatts. So it'll be done by the morning. Um, so we're fully charged, and we're ready to go. So next stop is also in Germany. From there, we went to Ionity. And what's that? I can see 76 kilowatts. I finally got pretty much maximum rate of charge on the Nero. I just had to drive 1,500 miles to get to an Ionity charger that did 76 kilowatts. We've uh, parked up at the services and um, we were at Ionity. So nice when you see the Ionity sign. You know, you're gonna get a nice fast charge and it's quite easy. So uh, the battery wasn't depleted half as much as we thought it was going to be by now. Um, because there were so many roadworks. Baby, baby, finiqui, finiqui. There were so many roadworks and, um, and lots, of, uh, lots of going downhill as well. So uh, we probably could have made it to the hotel actually, but obviously we've all got to stop and uh, eat. Yeah, we'll charge here probably until 100% and uh, then we'll be on our merry way. Uh, the next hotel also had a destination charger and it was a bonus. It was in Riesling country. Delicious Riesling, one of our favorite white wines, um, all along the Rhine in Germany, beautiful area. 
and there was a ferry journey as well so that added a frisson of excitement. So we've now arrived at um, a place called Asmanshausen and um, it, it, it's absolutely beautiful. It's on the Rhine. The hotel we're staying at, um, they do have a charger, but um, I have to ask the owner at about seven o'clock when the owner comes back, I have to ask them to tell me where it is and to turn it on, apparently. Um, but anyway, we've got 66% battery because we did the charge in uh, Ionity. The consumption info uh, says 16.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So that's, I mean, it's far better than it was. But then it's a funny thing because you do all these ridiculous motorway speeds on the autobahn. But then when you do slow down, you're regenerating so much, um, uh, you know, energy that uh, I, I think that improves things a little bit. But even with the, so even with the roof box, um, that's quite good because we were getting 20, we were only getting 20 before most of the time anyway so um i won't bore you with that um we're in uh, wine country here so we're gonna get ourselves some bristling <laughs> me <laughs> it's 11 39 in the evening obviously because it's pitch black and uh, we've charged up to 97%. So it was a seven kilowatt charger, Tesla destination charger. But uh, I had to move out of the way because we didn't uh, warn them before that we were getting there, that we would need to charge. Otherwise it would have left a space for us. Uh, I've had to move the car up to another parking place up the hill. Um, and anyway, now it's time for bed. And uh, then tomorrow we're off to Liège. I've probably said that wrong. Liège, Liège, Liège. Liège in Belgium um, and we have to get the dog sorted out with the vet because they've got to get they've got to have flea or tick treatment or whatever up to 72 hours before you go it's a, it's a bit of a nightmare anyway so we'll do that well hopefully we'll do that tomorrow and find a vet in Belgium so uh, anyway for now it is a good night that was a beautiful place lovely food as well great wine of course um, and I think we probably should have stayed a little bit longer but uh, anyway, on from there, uh, I think it's time for another Ionity charger. Uh, so the next step of our journey is to go to um, Belgium. Um, we're going to go via an Ionity uh, charger. It's about 80 kilometers away. And uh, we're very, very nearly home. Okay, well, let's see how it goes. So the next charger was Ionity Brochtal Ost. And we got here with ridiculously high battery. Actually, we're there. we got there with 72%. So again, we just didn't need to, we didn't need to charge. Uh, that's happened a lot, I think, on this trip, is that we just didn't need to charge. We could have pushed it much more, but you live and you learn, don't you? Um, so, I mean, we ended up spending more money than we needed to. The next hotel didn't have a charger, so we charged up to 100%, and on we went to Global, Globales Post Hotel in Belgium. We were picking hotels based on whether they were dog friendly um, and if they had a pool. Uh, this satisfied both requirements, but um, bad news was they gave us a smoking room. And in fact, the whole place smelled of smoke. Luckily, they were able to change us to a non-smoking room after we moaned a little bit. We stayed at so many nice hotels and when they're non-smoking hotels, they're so much more pleasant, I think. So we're in Belgium and um, we're at a hotel that doesn't have a charger. So it means we're gonna have to charge tomorrow at least once because the charger that we're staying at oh, sorry that i've had a i've had a wine i've had a glass of wine i've had a glass of wine and a whiskey the largest measure of whiskey i've ever seen tonight anyway um yeah so uh we've got 300 kilometers to travel tomorrow to get to calais we've got to get a vet we've got to find a vet tomorrow in calais um i called loads of vets in belgium today around where we're staying um because we need to give we need to get a vet uh to give baby some um t i think it's tapeworm uh medication before they'll let us back into england and then you have to you have to get the medication then you have to wait uh 24 to 72 hours or something like that i can't remember now but, um a bit of a faff really isn't it 
rubbish luck but today is 15th of august and that is a big holiday in many parts of europe including belgium so uh, so today is no good for getting a vet so we'll do it tomorrow we're in calais and it means it's kind of delayed our return a little bit but they're um uh, publicizing exploring the world on the bike on you know that's admirable and uh you know i'm sure they're all lovely and everything but God, this bus has been idling its engine um, for about an hour this morning, so it stinks of diesel fumes. God, it's horrible. Anyway, um, right, so we're off to uh, we're off to Calais today. The question is, do we charge once or do we have to charge twice? So um, I think my wife will drive, and I'll be sat in the back, as always, um, with uh, with uh, my mobile, trying to work out which charger to go to. So on from there, we went to an Allegro charger. And as always, well, almost always, New Motion works absolutely brilliantly. Um, and again, we didn't have to charge here. Um, we would have reached the next charger without a problem, but then we would have tip, dipped under our 20% threshold that we set ourselves. We were there for 15 minutes, um, got it up to 57%, paid eight pounds for the privilege, eight pounds, another eight pounds wasted that could have gone on a bottle of wine. So next charger, um, oh, maybe the last charger, in fact, is another Ionity one, Ionity a Wetteren. We reached the services there and it was absolutely packed. If, in fact, there was some, there was some icing, icing going on. It means when there's an internal combustion engine car parked in there instead of an electric one. Um, so that was happening all the time while we were there because um, really the services, it was packed. And they're also arranged in such a kind of a, a weird layout with these two, like two chargers, three, three banks of two chargers at kind of at an angle. And the, le the cables are too short. And so I went in, first of all, I reversed. No, first of all, I went in front ways. Well, that wouldn't reach. And then I had to reverse in. And anyway, it was a nightmare. And again, I didn't film any of this um, because I, I realized it's very difficult to film on the mobile while you're wrestling with uh, charging cables and daughter and everything. In fact, I need to wear like a miner's hat, I think, with a with a camera on it. Or a GoPro, a GoPro <laughs> it would do the trick, wouldn't it? But then I would look like a complete idiot. So it's charging, but they've got stupidly small charging cables. And um, with the charger at the front, kind of on the left, well, on the right, if you look at it from the front. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of acrobatics to try and get the thing in the hole. And we had to kind of reverse in, and it's really busy here and everything, so it's a bit of a, bit of a mess. They just need longer cables. But anyway, we're charging, and uh, we'll be good to go in probably another four, well, another hour, I think. So after that, we left with 97% and on we went to the glorious Hotel de Calais Coquel. They don't even bother with the sign. That's how classy this hotel is. It just says hotel. The hotel was a bit shabby. I mean, it was clean. It was clean. I suppose that's what you want, but it was pretty claustrophobic and we paid for breakfast, but then they didn't, they didn't actually tell us what time the breakfast was being served. Well, the kitchen closed at 9.30 apparently. So we got there at 10 and they said, no, you can't have breakfast. I tried to get a refund with the, for the breakfast and I couldn't. But anyway, um, we were in Calais. Um, we had to go to a vet. So the vet we found, um, he was nice enough and uh, spoke, spoke English and I could book online, which was great. And the next day off we went to Eurotunnel on the wonderfully short drive from the hotel. So it's well positioned, the hotel. I'm moaning about it, but at least it was well positioned. Uh, when we got there, um, oh, look at that. They've got chargers and hey they're free so why not so we topped up to 79 percent here we are then narration pick of the narration here we are in the queue to go back home who's excited and off we went we're in england everybody <laughs> So we're back home. Um, now it's just time to relax a little bit and yeah, well, and not travel for a while. Our objective was get to Italy as quickly but as comfortably as possible. Um, had we stopped to smell the roses a little bit more, it would have been 
probably a far nicer journey. So the problem with motorway driving is that you are at the mercy of the services and most of the services, certainly in um, France, you're relying on one charger being available. The infrastructure is improving at enormous rates and uh, it just needs to improve a little bit more on the motorway. But that's where Ionity is, uh, why they're doing what they can. Of course, all of this, if you have the Tesla, then all of this it becomes much easier. You have the safety net of the supercharger network. You've got sat nav that tells you what your range is going to be like when you get to a supercharger, how many people are using the superchargers. And when you get to a supercharger, they're bloody quick. So um, this is why you get lots of Tesla fanboys and girls because um, the whole experience is that much slicker. Uh, all the other car manufacturers, they need to get together and sort something out with this. Um, it's it's crazy that the you know it's great that Ionity are doing what doing what they're doing. So that's great on the hardware side, but on the software side, there needs to be some sort of coordination. You know, it's really like it's like a, it's an Apple or Google job probably. I mean, we've already got CarPlay and Android Auto, so they should build it into their mapping software. The e Nero is an amazing car. It's so efficient, um, easily beating um, the the Mercedes, the Audi, the Jag. You know, it doesn't beat the Teslas, but it beats all those other big, very expensive cars with worse range. Kia have done an amazing job with the efficiency. But, you know, the charge speed could be faster. If you do end up doing more than one charge a day, kind of sitting in the car and waiting for 40 minutes um, gets a little bit tiresome. We could have pushed it much more in so many, so many points in this trip. I mean, I feel like we've probably wasted, uh, I don't know, let's say 50 pounds maybe of charges, charging that we didn't need to do, probably more. Had we just um, trusted, had we trusted the GOM a little bit more, I think, uh, once, once you do start doing all this motorway driving, it does adjust pretty quickly to the average and then it gets pretty good. Um, I think we could have trusted that a bit more. We should have booked more destination charges sooner. Um, hotels with destination charges. It's just a bit draining. A road trip is draining when you have a child and a dog. But the dog was fine, really. but uh, it's draining anyway. That's nothing to do with the car being an electric one. So how much did it cost in total? All together, what have we got then? That was €271.84 or £247.37. So if you were driving a petrol car doing 38.8 miles to the gallon, so that would have cost 465 euros 20 or 420 pounds and nine pence. So clearly driving electric is cheaper. You could argue that, well, it's more hassle, of course, but you know, you could also think that it's far more environmentally friendly and it makes it more of an adventure, don't you think? No, Andrew, it's a pain. You're screaming at me right now. So back to those naysayers then saying, well, you can't do an EV road trip um, because of the charging infrastructure or just saying they don't want an EV because of the charging infrastructure not being good enough. Um, I think this has proved that without too much effort, I suppose you'll have your own opinion. Maybe you'll see this video and you'll think, my God, that was a lot of effort. But I, it didn't seem too bad to me. But uh, driving down to Italy in an electric car, if you... If you wanted to do that five years ago in a car other than a Tesla, I think that would have been a real struggle. I think it'll only take another two years, maybe even just one year for Ionity to spread all over the place. And at that point, it's gonna be so much easier. Obviously, if you get a Tesla, I think you're, you're, you're gonna be much less stressed. But uh, if you can't afford a Tesla or if you don't want a Tesla because it doesn't fit your needs, then what I would suggest is you go on to a betterrouteplanner.com. Choose, just pick any old route that you might want to do. Choose any old car that you might want and see what it suggests with the charging stops because I think you'll probably find that it's not as bad as you think it's going to be. When you think about the destination chargers, you, you charge while you're sleeping for free. Driving an EV is just so much more relaxing. It's as I've said before, it's like a Zen experience because it's, it's just so easy. And I'm not going to go all kind of Greta Thunberg on you, but you do just feel more content, I think, driving an EV because you're one less car kicking out pollutants i'm very wary that this is already it's i've gone on long enough um but if there's anything you want me to tell you about then let me know and uh i'll do my very best to do a video about it and uh, thanks very much for watching and um uh, bye for now